Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb, and you're about to get blown up. Welcome back to the new and different Buckle Bomb. You are back in the blast zone with the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and teach you exactly what it takes to become a professional wrestler. I am your host, Buck Bomber, and today I'm joined in the bomb shelter by the resident star boy, Danny O'Ryan. It me. (laughs) And we're also ducking and covering with Anthony Triage. That be me. What's up, fellas, ladies, whoever's on there? Oh, women don't listen to this podcast. You sure? Nobody does. You positive? Yes. Okay. Well, dang it, why am I here? I'm not a, I'm not a heel anymore, so I can't act like that. Ah. <laughs> well, anyway, we're here with the first official episode of the new and different Buckle Bomb, episode one, and this week's topic, perseverance in pro wrestling. Ooh, okay. All right. So, uh, so for anybody who doesn't know, Danny, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Give us the give us the the rundown. Back and forth. Yeah, the rundown. Uh, I am Danny Orion. I was actually on the first ever Buckle Bomb. My God, that was an interesting time. Kaka. Uh, <laughs> deep cut for anyone who ever listened to that. But uh, Danny Orion, I came here. Uh, I believe it was twenty. Hey man, twenty was it twenty twenty that I came here? No, it was 2021. It, I came 2021. I feel like it's been at least two years. It's been two years. Sheesh. Goodness gracious. Uh, I guess 2021. Uh, I actually came in on production to help out so I can get into the ring. And then I worked myself up from there. Uh, debuted, I think, in three months. Yep. Had yep, a cool, fast. dope feud with Zach Taylor. Mm-hmm. Then jumped into another feud with my one of my best friends, Ollie Summers. And then, uh, yeah, just kept going on. Eventually... Me and my friends grouped up, named the group Culture Shock with the help of a few others. And yeah, that's where we're at now, man. Mm-hmm. That's where mm-hmm. we're at. Mm-hmm. So Anthony, triage, tell us about yourself. Well, originally from Houston, Texas. We moved out here to Austin Middle School. Um, basically been in the school for about a month or so as of right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely enjoying it. Uh, it's tough. Not very much else to say. Training is rough, dog. We can if we if we ever talk about training during this podcast, I got you, man. Oh my man. god. Oh man. The stories. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So speaking of training, did you train before you came here? Absolutely, absolutely. I actually did. Um, over in San Antonio, uh, basically with a <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> take Editor, that. cut that. Yeah, take that. Hey, uh, uh, we actually. Uh, <laughs> Put a funny yeah. sound over that. Yeah, do do cut that. Uh, we actually talked about him last week and uh, no. Yeah, he's a. We didn't we didn't name names, but he's a he's a he's a big red flag. So I'm I'm glad you got out of there. <laughs> hey, um, I'm yeah. Uh, I survived. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, life took over for me. Guy. Life took over for me. I had to step back from the ring. Um, now was able to get in contact with Papa. Chased him down, pretty much stalked him for mm-hmm. a whole six months, and then finally he was like, "Come on, it's time." All right, all right, all right. Um, so, other than you know, he who shall not be named, <laughs> were there any other reasons why you, for all intents and purposes, kind of quit? Well, um, basically, money terror funds, mm. uh, the loss of a job, a car breaking down. Um, not being able to travel back and forth from city to city. Right. Uh, it, it just brought a toll on me. And, of course, I let a little JJ uh, take me mm-hmm. from my <laughs> dream at this particular point. But as of recently, <laughs> you're laughing, but I'm serious. Um, but recently, um, I'm going to get a little sentimental with y'all for a minute. Go ahead. But uh, I lost my – I lost my, my – oldest cousin basically was raised like my brother um this was new year's day Mm -hmm. uh i had talked to this gentleman uh, every day of my life basically um a week before that week before the tragic end he i i called him up and i was like hey brock i need 
I need to do something with my life. I'm, I'm regretting what I'm doing because, honestly, I'm supposed to be in that ring. I'm supposed to be flying. I'm supposed to be doing the stuff that I love to do. He sits back and says, well, hell, go do it, point blank. Five days later, New Year's Eve comes around. We find him passed, a, passed away of a heart embolism. He had a heart attack, 41 years old. At this particular point, that particular day is what made me say, hey, I'm getting back into it and nobody's going to stop me at what I'm doing. So this is for you, B. We love you. We miss you. Hey, I appreciate y'all letting me have my, my time to tell my story. Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry about that, man. No, no worries, no worries. So, um, switching gears a little bit. Um, yeah, this week's topic is perseverance, and you know, the lack of perseverance, you know, will cause somebody to give up. Yes. And um, you know, we, we're talking about the journey through professional wrestling. And last week we talked about how to start it. This week we're talking about how not to stop it. Do you, do you know where I'm going? It's yeah, like it's, definitely. It's like, get it's like it. a progression. It's like a progression. <laughs> yeah, definitely get it. Um, you can't give up, mm-hmm. point blank. Regardless of what the situation is, everybody goes through something. Um, if there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. Basically. Uh, Danny, have you ever felt like giving up? Yeah, there were a few times. Uh, I dude, there was, um, <laughs> man, I when I first came in, I felt like, and you can confirm or deny this, because you were well into this whenever I started, but um, I felt like I had a lot of people that were pulling for me at the school, a bunch of the older guys, a bunch of the seniors, a bunch of guys that graduated. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were a few times where, like, I get really hard on myself. When I was young, my uh, my uncles were basically my dads. They took mm-hmm. care of me. When it came to sports, it was always them taking me out to go do drills. And I take drills and training very seriously. So when I mess up on something, I... I have a bad habit of like getting onto myself like really, right. really bad. <clears throat> and so when I first started out, I would mess up on drills that I knew I could do. I, I 100% knew I could do. And I would get mad at myself and I felt like I was letting people down and I was just like, man, like why, why am I doing something that's making me so sad every single time I mess up? Oh man, um, that's sad. Uh, yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And, but um, it took, <laughs> it took one panic attack because it, it happens. Uh, it took one panic attack and one uh, Prince Adam and Vert Vixen uh, helped me through that, and they let me know. They were like, hey, like, this isn't about us. Like, you're not doing this for us. You should be doing this for you and what you love. And that kind of gave me a, a new kind of um, stance on how I felt about wrestling. Um, because now, if anyone watches me now, like, if you guys ever come to the school and we're training, I'm in the ring, I'm being stupid, I'm doing whatever I want to do, whatever makes me laugh, whatever's going to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a second time where I broke my wrist Oh, doing yeah, uh, yeah. yeah there was a time where I broke my wrist and um, I was going through before I broke my wrist I was pretty good on my health I was working out all the time I was running like geez like 20 miles a week I was eating right I was working out yeah, and I yeah. felt myself changing my body and then I broke my wrist and that all changed and I had to sit out and I couldn't do anything um, <clears throat> I couldn't afford to get surgery uh, fun fact I still have a broken wrist uh, yeah that's the whole thing. Um, and I, <clears throat> I kept coming to class, and I was watching people do things I wanted to do. Um, I was starting to get bookings at that point. Um, I was getting booked against other people, but breaking my wrist was like, oh, my God, like, is this the whole – you guys know everyone in that one guy in high school, he's like, I could have went to the NBA, but uh, I tore my ACL. Yeah. I felt that. I was just like, my God, like, I could be, you know, going to different places in Texas right now, but my wrist is broken, so, like – they're going to forget about me and like no one's going to care about me so i was coming to class uh it also took another prince adam to pull me aside he saw me moping around just watching class i had like i'm already scruffy now my my facial hair now isn't the best but like it was all scrappy and scruffed out and adam looked at me and he was like bro what are you doing he sat me down and he told me he was like like this isn't forever like your injury is not going to be forever like you're going to come back at some point so quit being down on yourself uh, pick yourself up because other people see that at the school and whether whether you think it or not people are looking at you um, in a good light and they kind of see you and they want to do the things that you know you can do mm-hmm. so I'm like okay so I can be somewhat of a source of inspiration for some people here maybe so I was like yeah I'm going to try to change my whole mood uh, after that but that, those were two times where I really wanted to not be here 
Gotcha, Not being wrestling, gotcha. yeah. yeah. Normally with the guys in the back, having constant, constant overview of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Just from just from my experience uh, as of right now, I haven't been here in AAPW very long, but um, everybody has been so supportive. Yeah. Uh, and that's the one thing that's been pushing me. Of course, I've told every last one of them, you can't get rid of me at this point. You're going to have to see me here every day working exactly as hard as everybody else or harder if I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, getting here early, staying late. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's, what, that's what most people don't understand, I feel like. Uh, like, it's so cliche, though. Like, you hear, like, first one there, last one to leave. No. But, like, it's a, it's a real thing, man. I, uh, with the people I came in, I felt like I definitely progressed over them because I chose to come super early and even though when I first started out, I couldn't go do suplexes or swantons, like, when I came in, I couldn't do all that flashy stuff. I had to just come in and practice, like, quarter rolls, mm-hmm. front rolls, back bumps. But I came in early to go practice that, and I would stay late to practice that, and I felt myself progressing quickly. Right. It, it matters. Stuff like that matters. That's, yeah, uh, that's it's, good to hear you say it that. It definitely man. does, because, uh, honestly, I got here about an hour early just to run the ropes. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure my foot placement was correct. Mm-hmm. Um it's very important. I hadn't really paid attention to it until I was instructed, hey, this is where your placement is. If you're in the middle of the ring, this is what you can do. If you're on this side of the ring or if you're on this side of the ring, this is what you can't do. You're limiting yourself. You got to make sure your fa- your foot placement is in the right place to be able to absolutely, do the things absolutely. you can do. One thing AAPW really stresses absolutely. is placement and positioning. For sure, um, man. That is, that is one thing AAPW is known for. Yes, it's I true. Didn't get that uh, on, on my limited experience of like going out to experience some of the indies, anytime I see an AAPW guy out there, I make it a point to go watch their match, and it's always it's always crisp. Like they're always where they're supposed to be. Right. And and people and people know that out there too. What what Buck Bomber is saying is absolutely true. Is uh, when you go out on the indies on Texas, like if you're an AAPW guy, like people expect that out of you as well. Right. The, the lineage we've had come out of here is insane. They go on do pretty good things like they they're pretty well off on themselves uh, when it comes to wrestling like they uh they they do well for themselves and they get well known which is part of the reason why i was dying to get here mm. yeah i always i always feel a little bad when i go out and work because i'm just like <laughs> I'm, you're you're a different type though yeah you're a different yeah. type so i feel like you shouldn't uh you shouldn't hold yourself to that standard though right but i you know it's always i wanted to be more like everybody else i, I feel that I feel like everyone, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like every time someone comes into a wrestling school, they want to be that technical wizard or that uh, that Mr. Perfect kind of wrestler. But that's so hard. Right. It's so hard to do that. Because nobody comes in saying, I want to be able to bump and then get over with character yeah. work. Yeah, it's never that. Nobody, never, nobody wants that. It's never, never that. that. You want to you put in the work to right. be able to be seen and to be heard. Um, me personally, I have, I'm, I'm a mark on certain superstars as well. Uh, mainly Eddie Guerrero, mm-hmm. his work, you may see me fly eventually. Firestar Flash, I gotta do it. Gotta do it. So, uh, bringing it back more to like actually what happens in class when you start, do you remember learning how to bump? Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, I think I was one of the rare few. Uh, because like I said in the beginning, I came in as a production. Right. So I was around the bumping. It definitely scared the uh, living H out of me since we're squeaky clean here. It scared me when I first came because it sounded like a bunch of gunshots. I was like, dude, like I didn't think it was like this. But I, I think I did production for, I think, like four months, I think. So I ended up getting used to it. And then when I took my bump, I was like, I'm addicted to this. Like I want, Like I want a bump now. Oh, which man. is a bad which is a bad habit I have now. I got to stop bumping as much as I do. But uh, yeah, a lot of things I hear from guys who've been working longer. Um, I remember uh, it was uh, the Pillars. Um, I'm blanking on his Paul Titan and um, Hunter Gray. Um, I remember they were talking about they were talking to uh, Rob the Builder and Ace Seidel, and they were talking all this. Oh, we're gonna bump, bump here and bump up there. And he's like, you know what? Instead. Let's just do some character stuff and not bump. Yeah. 
Dude, speaking on that, CJC, I don't remember when it was, but he went on a streak for a little bit where he was like, dude, I only bumped like one time that match. Like everything else was like a roll or me getting thrown out the ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so CJC is uh, kind of ahead on the curve on that. I'm still a young little spry young 23-year-old man, so I like bumping, but I at some point I got to stop because – it, it's fundamentals. It's fundamentals for wrestling, but at some point, you got to take care of yourself. Right. Well, bumping, oh, bumps for me. Um, actually, I use it as therapy. Um, life's hard, point blank. And hitting that mat is more of a release for me. Uh, it's one of those things where you're, say you had a bad day. You showed up to work late. Your boss chews you out. You really want to punch him in the face, but you can't. So you come over to the school, you get ready. And of course, you know, once you're starting, you have to go through one through eight to be able to do it. I wanted to go straight to eight <laughs> just to be able to get that feel. And I'm pretty much an adrenaline junkie. So once hitting that mat, it's liberating for me. It's fun. Can't relate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, bumping was uh, something that actually, um, three months before I started actually training, I showed up to sign up, and I remember seeing the flip bump, and I was just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. That's I remember fun. Pops was like, you ready to start? And I'm like, well, see, sir, I'm not afraid to admit that I'm a coward. And he was like, oh, okay. And I just left. <laughs> and I remember when I came back, he was like, are you just going to leave again? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'll do it. And... Um, Bumping was, it is a huge barrier for entry. It um, is. Yes, it is. I had a, uh, I don't remember their names, and thank God, because I don't want to name drop them, but they were uh, a few, you know, I'm not even going to allude to, yeah. Uh, there were a few people in my beginner class. Uh, they were all about it. You know, we were locking up. We were doing all that, and then it got to bumping, and uh, they dropped off so fast. They started hitting their heads. Mm. They were saying their wrists and their hands were hurting. Their feet were hurting from all the bumps, and they, they dropped off super fast. So uh, that, that couldn't ring more true. You know what they say about excuses, right? What do they say about excuses? Uh, don't open the door. <laughs> we're just going to say everyone's got one. <laughs> but that's an excuse. Yeah, but we, uh, we, we don't shy away from mentioning that people give up. People quit. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely the start. We always go... I mean, there's always a speech that everybody gets given, you know, it's like, look to your left, look to your it's, right. Yeah. Some of those people won't be here in a month. It's true. I am, um, I think I only had, I think I had like 10 people in my starting class and I am the last one from that. Mm -hmm. They all dropped off within one, uh, one year or, uh, even less than that. Uh, I had one, I don't know if I should name drop him, one small child in my class that I was really pulling for. I don't know if you remember him at all. Uh, little Chris? Yeah, Little Chris. <laughs> Miss Little Chris. Uh, me and Little Chris were the last ones for the longest time, and I think it got to about uh, six or four months in. I think it was about six months in, and then he just quit. He couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, he had to focus on soccer. Soccer, yeah. He still likes my post. He hits me up every once in a while. I was like, he was like 13. Yeah, he so was. I, what I'm hoping, what I'm hoping, Little Chris, if you're listening, <laughs> I want you to come back. We you miss you, Little Chris. You still have so much time, dude. You like, do. Like, we were all wondering, man, if this kid sticks with it, what is he going to look like when he's 20? Can we name drop? Can we name drop people? Go ahead. Uh, Ricky Starks comes to the school, and even one, uh, can I say the other one, a... Yeah, I mean, you've already ACH? Seen. Okay, cool. Ricky Starks and ACH, every time they came and they saw little Chris, they would all pull us, like, the older guys aside, and they'd be like, yo, like, take care of these guys, like, this kid. He's going to be amazing when he goes. Right. And he, he had potential. He got he got one match against one Warsaw on a show I don't ever want to bring up ever again. Um, it wasn't affiliated with AAPW, so I take solace in that. But uh, he had one match. When did this happen? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. That was... I think that was in the spring. I think it happened in the spring. Uh, someone and some people wanted to come run a show here. And so they... Oh! Yeah. God! <laughs> the I, light bulb comes on. Bro, I, I don't even blocked, wanna, I blocked yeah. this. I wish I could. I wish I could. Um, <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. Because I was there. I was told to come here. It may be something good for me. It ended up not being anything good. It ended up being a whole fugaze, like, crappy show. But little Chris got a match on it, and everyone seemed to like it. His parents were there. He got carried out by his family. It was dope. 
Dude, That's awesome. Up. Shout out to little Chris, man. We miss you. Yeah, dude. He really should come back. Yeah, I should hit. I'm gonna hit him up. Man, yeah, see what definitely he's do. Definitely do. Say, man, forget about soccer. Yeah. <laughs> forget, forget soccer. We all miss you. We a bunch of grown ass men want you to come back and, and we want to we punch you in the face. Allegedly, if you Allegedly. sign a form. Allegedly. Yeah, no, if you sign a form, bro. That reminds me. Um, yeah, we don't treat uh, Miles the same. Uh, Houston, 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 we don't treat Houston Hendrix. We don't Houston treat Hendrix. him the same way we treated little Chris. Little Chris. At all. When they're like the same age. Yeah, little Chris had more of a baby face though. Houston exactly. Hendrix looks. He kind of looks like a grown man. He looks like a lead of a, a rock band group, ready just to pop off and scream his vocals as loud as he can. And he, and Houston like jabs back sometimes though. Yeah. Real little Chris will just. Like. Little Chris will like smirk at you and like do. He'd be like. Hm. And like a little a little corner of his mouth would come up. Houston Hendricks will fire back at you. He does not care. He yeah, does little not Chris was pitch. little Chris was pure. Little Chris was very pure. I miss that man. Man, but I like how we we circled back around to the whole uh, topic of you know perseverance and quitting because you know quitting out of pro wrestling isn't always you know a I can't do this anymore or this is not working for me. Yeah. I shouldn't be here. I'm never gonna get anything out of this. Sometimes it's. I don't have time or it, I got to focus on something else. Yeah, a mental thing too. Like, oh, like definitely. yeah, alluding back to what I said earlier, man, it was definitely a mental thing. Uh, just getting in my own head. And that's usually what it is for most people. I had a friend here uh, who was going to be a culture shock member at some point. Uh, he ended up leaving. He got into his own head and he ended up quitting. And that, that's all it took. He was a good wrestler. He was fine. He was a cool guy. And uh, he hit us up one day in our little culture shock group chat. And he was just like, I can't do it anymore. And he just fell off the face of the earth. What? happened to him we don't know we were texting in the group chat and he was like he was like guys like uh, i think i'm gonna take a step away from wrestling we were like hey just hit us up man we're, we're still your friends just because you're not in wrestling doesn't mean you're not a person to us like hit us up stay stay in touch don't be a stranger right and then he became a stranger and we've never yeah, no, he, spoken to him again he disappeared completely yeah it sucks too trace. it sucks too that that's a case of someone being really good and having like a talent for this oh definitely just getting in their own head and they just disappear and they're, they're only hurting themselves I remember, I remember, um, you weren't in the match, but it was a, um, it was a six man tag, him, oh, him, Ollie, Ollie and American, American Eagle. Eagle. Yeah. And that was, that was a moment where I was like, all right, these guys pulling up. Yeah. These guys pulling up. I, yeah. Which is always, it, it's really satisfying because, um, I'm not around as much as I used to be. Yeah. And like with, uh, with guys like, uh, Wentworth and, uh -huh. and Cash, I'm just like, when, yeah. they, get, when they get good. Yeah. I'm like, well, the better than me now. Okay. It's cool, man. It's cool. I've, um, you know, the few breaks that I did take from the school, I started to see that kind of stuff. It, for me, it was more um, Ziggy Winston mm -hmm. and uh, Felix Rogers and Lady Bird nice. because I, I started, um, I would help them like before class, like learn stuff like Huracan, head scissors, right. like all that kind of stuff. Um, but then, you know, I hurt my wrist and I was like, I can't be here anymore. This sucks to be around this and not do it. And I would come back every once in a while. Then I'm seeing Lady Bird getting matches. I'm seeing Fe I was actually Felix Rogers' uh, debut match, but then Ziggy was getting matches, and I was like, God, dude, like this is this is how it is. It's just next one's up, and it really is. I can't remember what match it was. I think it might have been the debut match with you because I feel like you were in it. Um, but yeah, no, Felix. I was I was I was <laughs> shocked. I was like, did. Uh, didn't he hurt himself or something? I was like, was he like not training or something? I sense of that. Yeah. Um, we're making sense of that T-shirt. <laughs> yes. um, buckle bomb. Sense of that. There it, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, Felix was a good one, man. Yeah, he, uh, went from he went from announcing. Obviously, he was training behind the scenes, but he was an um, still is an amazing announcer. He does Smash commentary for like majors in Smash. This dude is there anytime it's in Texas. He's doing really good for himself right now. I'm so happy for him. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it came to wrestling, you know, behind the scenes, he was working. And then, uh, yeah, he came out. He got over quick, too. His music was dope. His yeah. His music was super dope. And his, his character got over, too. It's kind of like suave, little aristocrat. But he was always getting beat up because he's really small. I remember, um, I love I love his promo pictures because I remember <laughs> I, um, I was making a flyer. Buck Bomber makes the flyers, by the way. Pull back go. the curtain even more. Um... I put him on a flyer where he's going like, yeah, he's, he's making kind of a seductive face. And I put him next to Ziggy Winston, who's got like, you know, thumb the, and yeah, index yeah, finger under his chin. And I'm yeah. just like, I, <laughs> I cropped that and I started sending it to people just like, you know, <laughs> when, uh, when the guys look at you from across the bar, <laughs> uh, yeah, we like your vibe. 
That's yeah. that kind of vibe. Absolutely, you get. absolutely. I kind of like your vibe. That's what that gave off. I know. I was like, man, they look like they hunting for some ladies. Yeah. So this is your deal. You like to make memes out of people. Is that the problem? Is, is that the case? Yes, I've done that with so many things. Uh, yeah, because you've already true. dream crushed me already on Facebook as it is. It's true, you know. I mean, I mean, until you have me like animating a mouth on you to something, you, you're not you're not really here at APW. Um, I know. Uh, I know. Danny knows yeah, that. There would be some night. It'd be two in the morning getting ready to go to bed had a long night and uh just a random random message coming through i open it and it's someone i know with a animated mouth just bobbing up and down really fast with just whatever whatever coming out of their mouth well i haven't got that but at 1 30 a.m in the morning i get a hit from mr buckle bomb over here with a nice picture of a little bald dude looking up at me (laughs) with the middle finger shown to me i'm like uh, dream I had, crusher I had, I had to explain the meme man I had to explain <laughs> oh, the, meme. the meme explainer you made him explain the meme dog yes, yes he did oh goodness it was a good one though i had a good laugh off of it it was about a good 45 minute laugh <laughs> all right how we doing on time uh we got like four or five more minutes so we're at half an hour okay okay Ooh. um so it's time for abp uh oh. always be plugging oh, um, oh let's go plug game Danny, what's uh, what's going on with you? What are you, where are you gonna be at? All right, guys, you can find me on Facebook, Danny O'Ryan. Instagram, I believe it's still Danny X O Ryan. Twitter, Danny X O Ryan. Uh, I think that's what I'm doing right now. Please, if God, don't find my Snapchat because I will not add you. Um, yeah, posting cool pics, me doing questionable things, jumping off of things I shouldn't be jumping off of, twisting my body in ways they shouldn't be twisted, and. Uh, yeah, you'll see some of my culture shot buddies, uh, Ollie Summers and uh, CJC. Mm-hmm. Uh, any shows coming up? Any shows coming up? I got uh, Hogs Forever, which is a really silly name if you really think about it. For Next Level Wrestling in um, Crystal City, uh, got AAPW, got Next Level like three times next month, uh, Advanced Pro Wrestling. These are all, hey, I wish I had my booking. My booking book here. Right, I was going to say, you want to mention some dates yeah. on those? I can't remember, dude. I yeah, only I got, remember. I got some shows sometime. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is, uh, I don't even know what week. What is this week? What is what is Saturday? What day is that, guys? The 20th. Jamie, what is Saturday? The 20th. The 21st, the 21st of May. The 21st, yes. The 21st of May. You can see me in, uh, I just messed up the name again. What is it called? Crystal City. Crystal City for Hogs Forever. Crystal for next City level. where? Crystal City is right outside San Antonio. It's a little bit outside San Antonio. Now, is that a city or is that like a place? Like it's a, a city. Oh, okay, okay. It's a city. Oh, oh, oh my God! I have New Breed. Uh, I think June tenth, whatever the second Sunday of June is. You June tenth? Question mark. McAllen. This guy is. Bitch. I'm sorry for everyone booking me. I care. I really do. I'm just bad with dates. Uh, really Cola, did you find it? The twelfth. Is it the twelfth? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, 12th. June twelfth. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. and I have next level uh, the day before that. B festival. Um, July 4th, we're doing, uh, Next Level's doing another show. The Bee Festival. There's a, bee, a Honey Bee Festival. I, I, yeah. That, well, that, that kills the joke I was going to make. I was like... It, no, it's the Bee Festival, everyone. Like, about bees. About bees. Bees catchers. Okay. <laughs> was that the joke? No, is it about bees? It's about honeybees. Like, legitimately? Like a, yeah. Like, like buzz? Yeah. yeah buzz, why buzz. is there a wrestling show? Why? Yeah. Because it's a big festival. They okay, probably sell okay. their money. All right, fair Bring enough. the people fair in, enough. dog. No, wrestling shows can be anywhere. I'm just, that's not the first <laughs> thing I think of. I think, you know, oh, you know, county fair. True. Oh. Oh, it is going to be a fair as well. It's in a fairplex. Biker rally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, photography store grand opening, but P- not. <laughs> Pecan Street Festival. Yeah, but not. Pecan Street not Festival. Not bees. Goodness gracious. Yeah. We're going off the rails, guys. Absolutely. Um, okay, ABP time for uh, our boy Anthony Triage. There's not much about me as of right now. Of course, as y'all know, I've just started. Uh, right. But I recently did just debut on AAPW Commentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, check me out. I was on Saturday the 14th, 2022. Play by play action. Let's see what's going on. Let me know. Uh, I haven't made a page or anything as of yet, but triage coming we'll, soon. We'll get there when you debut, my guy. Triage we'll coming there. soon. For we'll real, get there. for real, definitely, definitely. Um, any parting words you guys would like to instill with the listeners about perseverance? 
For sure. Uh, yeah, man, things get hard. Things are always going to get hard in life, uh, no matter what walk of life you come from. You could be the richest kid in the neighborhood, the poorest kid in the neighborhood, uh, but you're still going to get challenges all your life, and uh, how you respond is what makes you you. So always be there. Always try your hardest. I go by just, just my last little saying, whatever we're going to call it. Okay. Um, anytime you go anywhere, always give it your best because you never know what may come of it. Right. Well, uh, to be cliche, you are your own self-critic. Don't let yourself defeat you. Absolutely. That's a word from the triage. Epic. All right. <laughs> well, wrestling fans, this has been the Buckle Bomb. I'm your host, Buck Bomber. We're we're saying we're signing off with uh, Anthony Triage and Danny O'Ryan. Uh, shout outs to Cola the Tech Man. And you have been blown up.